In today's episode, I will be sharing with you my honest opinion of homeschooling so far and a lesson that I learned a long time ago and how it's revisiting me today. Hey, welcome to Jessica Stories. I'm Jessica and I'll be your host. This is a place where I share the stories of my life and look for God in the details and the lessons that He is trying to teach me. And it is my mission to encourage you to look at your life differently and to see what God is teaching you so that we can seek after His light, shine bright and build confidence in Him and His plan for each of us. Hey, hey, my darling friends, welcome to the podcast today. Hey, how are you? Um, (laughs) I'm in a little bit of a giddy mood, mostly because I've been really down today and now I get to podcast and it is really making me happy and I'm going to be kind of goofy because it feels good to be goofy right now. So let's just chat about Reagan. Remember when she got really fat? I did tell you that, right? We dropped her off at the kennels. They fed her way too much. She came back like a chunky monkey. Well, I'd like to report that she is back to her trim self because we just spent a week with her running wild in the wilderness and she was super duper happy. She took lots of bath time in the creek, which was freezing, but she is healthy and happy. And we're all feeling grateful because she... Not only was she chunky monkey, but she didn't look very happy. So we are happy now. (laughs) Um, What is adding light to my life? I do want to tell you a really funny thing. It it didn't happen today. It happened about five days ago or so. But I was doing some yoga. I'm out. We're in a place called, at the time, a place called Little Granite Creek. And there I am in Downward Dog. And Ben and the boys run past me butt naked headed for the creek we're in the middle of nowhere there's not people around and they're as giddy as can be and in the creek where we were someone prior to us had created little you know bathtub spots with stones to kind of create a little tub and in they went as nude as can be and it just cracked me up the boys were talking about it for days after as it was such a highlight and very impressionable for them to bathe nude in a creek in the wilderness. <laughs> and we just got a lot of giggles out of it. So there you go. I mean, maybe if you need to just add some light to your life, maybe go skinny dipping or witness someone going skinny dipping. <laughs> oh, let's chat about where I'm at. I figured today I would tell you My honest opinion of homeschooling thus far, we're still very much in the beginning threshold of homeschooling. And while it has gone possibly exactly how I anticipated, I am really tired. (laughs) While we don't do like school all day, you know, it's mostly about three hours to four hours a day. And the kids are doing great. It is still really exhausting for me because I am not used to planning and preparing. We are using curriculums, but still, um, it just takes some brain power and creating new habits and routines that did not exist before. And I'm trying to get up early before my kids so that I can do things to nourish my spirit and to set my day up in a way that I can turn up for them as my best self. And while week one was really good, um, week two and thus onward, I've been a lot more tired. And that has been apparent. I don't regret it so far. Um, I just, I'm just really tired. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I think that exhaustion, that mental, emotional exhaustion, plus with some family challenges that we've had lately have definitely propelled me towards lower expectations. So I'm moving forward with less expectations than I started. And I think that will be a good thing. <laughs> I think that will help me and bless me and hopefully bless those in my family. 
Now let's get into today's story, darling. Today's story is going to be something I shared with my kiddos as we were doing church the other day. And currently, um, we're still doing church ourselves because church is not in session, at least where we've been, due to COVID. And so we get to partake of the sacrament in our trailer and share messages and study the scriptures together. And Ben was sharing a message and it triggered this story. And I thought, I need to tell my podcast friends because I don't think I've told you this story. And I think you're going to love it. So I have told you about how I wanted to come over to America when I was six years old and I came over and then I didn't get accepted and then I had to, anyway, if you don't know that story and you're new to the podcast, go and check it out. It's called Failure, I think. It's somewhere at the beginning of the podcast. It's about failure. Look it up. It's super, it's a good story. But I'm going to tell you about how I wanted to become a young ambassador, a Brigham Young University young ambassador, and a part of the Music Dance Theatre program. This was my dream, friends. My dream was to go and be a performer at Brigham Young University because their performing group had come, and I'd seen it when I was six years old, I'd seen it when I was like 12 years old, and when I was 15, and every time I was like, I have to be a part of this. Yes! So... That was the dream, friends. And it was a big, fat, glorious dream. And when I was growing up, I would often make decisions on what shows I would do thinking, oh, this will help me reach my goal of becoming a young ambassador performer and of being a part of the music dance theatre program. Because that was my dream. I wanted to go to Brigham Young University to study these things because at that university, they... It was a church university and I would be encouraged to keep my standards. And that was one of the biggest frustrations I had in high school and in community theatre because I would go and they would want me to do things that I did not find uplifting, I did not think were ethical, and I did not feel comfortable with. And so I'd have to read all the scripts and be like, okay, am I willing to say these words? Am I willing to share this message with an audience? Do I feel comfortable? And half the time I'd be like, I'm not going to do this one because I don't want to be a part of that production because I don't think it's uplifting. I don't think it's moral and I don't think it's going to add light to this world. And that was super stressful. And I knew if I got to go to BYU, I wouldn't have to worry about that anymore. All of a sudden, I could just be and I could grow and advance in my craft. That was what I wanted to do. And when I would graduate, I thought I'm going to either New York City and go to Broadway or I'm going to go back to England and be in the West End and perform. These were my dreams. And Brigham Young University was the stepping stone towards that. Now, the first year um, I auditioned. So I was there from yeah, August and our auditions were in January. Now, they took eight girls, eight boys, and there were like a lot of girls that auditioned. I think there was like 650 something the year I auditioned. There was less than 100 boys. So the boys, it was way easier for them. Uh, nonetheless, they're super talented, don't get me wrong, but still, the competition's way less. So I auditioned and I made girl number 10. So I was a waitlist girl and they said I could, you know, turn up and do the classes. If anyone dropped out, I'd need two people to drop out for me to get a place, but that I could take that spot. Well, one person did drop out, so I got bumped to number 9 girl, but no one else did. But I was I had my fingers crossed, friends. I had my fingers crossed. I took the classes and you know what? At the time I was taking these classes and I didn't feel terribly confident and I didn't really feel like I felt like I was a part of the the group. Nonetheless, I took them and then the next year I auditioned. I didn't even make anything. <laughs> I didn't make it. I didn't make the the major. I did not make the wait list, nothing. This was a whole second year in that I'd been doing classes towards this major to get me into the major to, and if I was in the major, I'd have a way better chance of becoming a young ambassador performer. 
This is the plan, friends. This is what I've been dreaming of since I was six years old. And I failed. I failed miserably. And I was devastated. I was absolutely heartbroken. And my pride stung. Because I told everyone my dream. I was one of those people like, oh, I'm going to do this. Ever since I was six, I tell everyone I was going to do this. And then no, no, I, I didn't. <laughs> I couldn't do it because I wasn't good enough and they did not want me. And that is the truth. And I was heartbroken. I remember laying on the floor of my bedroom for hours. And I sobbed and sobbed and sobbed until there was literally no more tears left in the cavity of my head. And it was just dry. And then I just felt numb. I just wanted to disappear and never come back. It was awful. And I was telling my kids this story because we read a scripture that triggered this memory. And we're going to share the scripture with you. It's in Helaman. And it says this, it's Helaman 13, verse 19 and 20. It says, for I, the Lord, will, no, that's not what it says. It says, for I will, saith the Lord, that they shall hide up their treasures unto me. And cursed be they who hide not their treasures unto me. For none hideth up their treasures unto me, save it be the righteous. And he that hideth not up his treasures unto me, cursed is he. And also the treasure And none shall redeem it because of the curse of the land. Now, maybe you're like, what in the world does this have to do with your dream? And it actually has everything to do with my dream. I have come to learn after this huge disappointment in my life that had I been able to live my life the way that six-year-old Jessica planned, and that meant going to Brigham Young University, getting accepted into the music dance theater program, becoming a young ambassador performer, and then going on to become a professional performer, I know that I would not have hid my treasures up to God. I would have hid my treasures, my successes, my achievements to myself. I know that. I have had spiritual confirmation since that it would have been too desirable for me to not hide it up unto myself, for me not to do it to get my own game, to push myself and propel myself forward to achieve my dream. I know I would have sacrificed my faith. I'm sure I still would have been a nice person. I'm sure I still would have said all the right things on the outside, but on the inside, my intent would not have been pure. Also on the inside, I would not have thought that I really needed my savior. Also on the inside, I would have thought I did this. My hard work did this. Aren't I great for doing this? I would have had those thoughts. I know because I have hindsight now and I've lived being me for a really long time. But I know that that's who I would have become. And so I look back with such gratitude that God decided to cut me back to create more growth and more beauty. At the time, I was devastated. I felt like he had cut everything away from me. And I was so heartbroken. And I was mad. And I was embarrassed and frustrated. Who am I? I've dreamed of this since I was six. But because I was cut back, I had to reassess and my life got pressed forward in a different trajectory. And it is because of that trajectory that I got upon that I encountered some of the trials that I've had that have helped me grow my testimony of who I am with my Savior Jesus Christ as my Redeemer. I've come to learn that because He has redeemed me. He has saved me. He has transformed me over and over again. And I needed to be cut down. I needed to have those experiences to know that I am nothing without my Savior, Jesus Christ. 
I want to share a thought that I was reading the other day, and this is from a conference talk of last April, and it was given by Dallin H. Oaks, and the conference talk is titled The Great Plan. And it says, the divine plan for us to become what we are destined to become requires us to make choices, to reject evil opposition that tempts mortals to act contrary to God's commandments and his plan. It also requires that we be subject to other mortal opposition. Remember, opposition in all things. And then he says, such as from the sins of others or from some defects of birth. Sometimes our needed growth is achieved better by suffering and adversity than by comfort and tranquility. And none of this mortal opposition could achieve its eternal purpose if divine intervention relieved us from all the adverse consequences of mortality. Oh my golly. That is so true. It's true back then when I didn't get what I wanted because had I got it, I would not have grown. I would have hid my treasures to myself. I would have not recognized God's hand in everything. I would have probably on the outside been like, oh, I'm so grateful. Heavenly Father's really blessed me. But on the inside, I'd be like, dang, you're good, girl. You're amazing. Look how great you are, right? (laughs) I would have because I know me and I especially know me back then. But instead, I had this opposition. What does he say? Sometimes our needed growth is achieved better by suffering and adversity. Because I suffered, because I felt adversity, I felt Satan's lies telling me you weren't good enough, which was true. But instead, he wanted me to feel like my worth wasn't good enough because I didn't fall. I didn't make this major. I didn't make this performing team. It wasn't just you're not good enough, it was your worth is less than. You're not good enough for God anymore. Because I had that suffering and that adversity, it put me in a place where I was desperate for my Heavenly Father. I was desperate to know my worth without these achievements to attach my worth to. Suddenly, was I enough if I totally failed, if I wasn't good for this major? If I didn't follow through on dreams because I wasn't given the opportunity. Because I had the opportunity to suffer, I started to learn that I was enough for my Savior. And even if I did fail in other areas, He would still save me over and over again. Another thought, this is from Elder Robert D. Hells from a talk that he gave in General Conference, April 2020. It's called Finding Refuge from the Storms of Life. And he said, oh, this is him being quoted, sorry, in that talk. And the quote is, suffering is universal. How we react to suffering is individual. I love this. Suffering is universal. All of us will suffer. Welcome to the club of being a human being. We do not need to feel sad for ourselves because we're suffering. We can actually remember, oh wow, I'm a human being. This is universal. But how we react to it is individual. That's where all the options occur for us. All the different life situations happen often as a result of our reaction. He goes on to say, suffering can take us one of two ways. It can be a strengthening and purifying experience combined with faith or it can be a destructive force in our lives if we do not have faith in the Lord's atoning sacrifice. I am so grateful that my Heavenly Father is so patient with me that He is willing to teach me over time, over many experiences that my Savior's atonement covers it all. It covers my failures. It covers my rejection of not getting into the music dance theater program. It covers my embarrassment for having told everyone for years and years that this is what I was going to do and then not to be able to do it. It covers it all. And it also transforms 
times our heart so that as we start to have our blessings, as we start to see our Heavenly Father bless us and guide us, we don't hide our treasures to ourselves. We hide them up to our Heavenly Father because we are able to see His hand in our daily life. We are able to see that He is molding our very hearts and directing our daily life if we allow Him, if we choose to seek Him, if we choose to receive His light, to follow it and to become like Him bit by bit line upon line, precept upon precept. I am incredibly grateful that I am learning that over and over again. And at this point in my life, I'm learning it again, you know, with this true confidence course, this framework that I have felt inspired to create. Over the last several months, I've had thoughts like, who are you doing this for, Jess? Are you doing it to make lots of money, (laughs) which (laughs) could not be further from the truth. I've made like basically no money, but you know, there's definitely been like ideas like that would be amazing. Like this is so powerful. This could help a lot of people. And then when people aren't interested in it, then my heart sinks. Is it sinking because I'm hiding that treasure up unto me because I'm seeing it as a reflection of my worth I think there are definitely times I felt that way. And I get to learn this lesson again at a deeper level. And I'm sure over the course of my life, I will learn this same lesson to learn how to hide my treasures up unto God, to give it back to him because all that is good, all that is light comes from him. He's the source of all of it. And I'm grateful that he continues to remind me day after day after day. And I encourage you to see what you can do to hide your treasures up to your Father in Heaven. Thank you so much for listening. I want to encourage you to look at your life lessons differently. What is God teaching you through the experiences you're having day after day? And how can you use those experiences to grow your confidence in God, grow your confidence in His plan for you, seek after His light, and shine bright.